But uh, if uh, we have a very large scale event in which things are far apart, and I drew it somewhere, but it's long lost. If I had some metal plates with an excess of protons here and some extra electrons sitting here, then an electron going along here, and mind you, this is on a very large scale compared to my other drawings where atoms were big there. Now they're tiny. It could be a photon going across here, another photon, another photon. These billions of photons going across are all very long wavelength, a few centimeter, half a centimeter, contain very low energy and hardly disturb the system. The thing that's emitting them can emit them without any change. It's such a small energy. At any rate, uh, the main point is that the electron in going along in this space here is not going along the same way as it would if there were no plates. And when you calculate the chance of finding an electron to go from here to here, you'll discover also, just like we did with light, that in this approximation of large scale, the only path which is important is a special curved path, not straight, because the photons are altering the amplitude. Actually, yes, that's right. The interference, I got the curvature in the right direction. <laughs> uh, that's what was worrying me. If you, in the case of light, you remember that there was an angle at which the amplitudes came in, and if we added all these amplitudes together at slightly different angles, the only path that was important was one in which the angles are not changing. In the case of light, the angle depended only on the time. And so it was the quick time should be not changing, or least. In this particular case, the quantity which is not changing is more complicated than the time. It's a more complicated thing. It happens to be, have a different name. It's called the action. And the pairs of particles can be calculated by computing a certain quantity on a path called the action. And the path takes the path, the curve, which looks like the path curve of least action. These, this way of putting the laws of mechanics was in, discovered many, many years ago as a, what we call classical mechanics. The relationship of quantum mechanics, see, quantum mechanics is, is exactly right. And the classical mechanics is an approximation. The behavior of light jumping all around as before is right. But the idea that it goes in a straight line is an approximation. The idea that an electron goes in a curve is an approximation. It's really amplitude jumping about. This example, however, shows something interesting. In many circumstances, it's true that we have long wavelength photons which can be emitted because they contain so much little energy without disturbing the source. And whether or not they're absorbed by an electron is a matter that doesn't make much difference to the energy of the electron. And so we can find an electron moving in a region in which there are available many photons, enormous numbers. The wavelengths are so long, the energy is so low, the numbers are very large. But they're all about the same. Then we can describe this electron by saying it goes in a straight line except it's disturbed. It's disturbed by the possible presence of photons. We say in an old-fashioned language that there's a field in the neighborhood, an electric and magnetic field, which alters the motion of the electron. But what this electric and magnetic field is, is amplitudes to find photons in very large numbers under circumstances where their energy is so low that it's easy to emit them. And that's uh, the earliest ideas then about the motion of electrons was that they were particles being bent by forces generated by fields. This is now all passe. Instead of that, it's just the exchange of electrons, exchange of photons between the electrons or between the nucleus and the electron, the amplitudes for which are all given by this little constant, and the amplitude for the photon to move is given by a known function and the electron likewise. And that's all there is to it, and from it all the rest of the laws of physics come out.